Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to senior recognition for the 2020-2023 Osh football team. Tonight we are going to recognize 16 different football and cheerleader seniors. Our first senior tonight is Cam Branch. He's been a part of the football program for four years as a four-year letter winner. His most memorable moment at Olsh was the time he started his first game and playing with his friends. Cam's future plans are to go to trade school, to become an electrician or join a union. He's a member of Arad Baptist Church. Cam is the son of Chloe, Robin, and Kiana. And he is from Lemire, Eastside, Pennsylvania. Put your hands together for Cam Branch. Our next senior is Brady Brazell. He's been a part of the football program for four years and a four year letterman, and he's also the team captain. Other Olsh athletics and honors include four-year letter in baseball and football and first team all-conference as a defensive end. His academic honors include honors, highest honors, and three times student of the month. Other Olsh activities include student ambassador, chapel choir, altar server, interact club, junior achievement, baseball, Cairo, campus ministry, character alliance, in WCHR. His most memorable moment at Olsh was being able to play at PNC Park and Heinz Field. Brady will be pursuing a degree in phys Physician Assistant Science as a, at an undecided university. He's a member of Archangel Gabriel Parish. Brady is the son of Bob and Julie Purcell and also escorted by Bobby Purcell and is from McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Brady Brazel. Our next senior is Brandon Brazel. He's been a part of the football program for four years and a four-year letter winner and this year's team captain. Other Olsh athletics and honors include four-year letter in baseball and football, and first team all conference as a linebacker. His academic honors include honors, highest honors, and student of the month. Other Olsh activities include student ambassador, junior achievement, Cairo, character alliance, altar server, lector, campus ministry, baseball, and chapel choir. His most memorable moment at Olsh was playing at Heinz Field, PNC Park, and Lee Com Park. Brandon will be pursuing a degree in law or sports management at an undecided university. He is a member of Archangel Gabriel Parish at St. Malachy Church. Brandon is the son of Bob and Julie Brazil and is from McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Brandon Brazil. Our next senior is Damari Bra. He has been a part of the football program for two years and a four-year letterman with two at Cornell and two at Olsh. His academic honors include honor roll and student of the month. His most memorable moment at Olsh is all the people, faculty, staff, and coaches who make the Olsh environment the great one that it is. Damari's future plans are to attend college and continue playing football, but still is undecided on a college and major. Damari is the son of Scott Bra and Nadine Stitch and is from Coriopolis, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for K Damari Bra. Our next senior is Tim Butler. He's been a part of the football program for two years. His academic honors include highest honors. Other Olsh activities include prom committee and junior achievement. His most memorable moment at Olsh is watching the football team play at Heinz Field. 
Tim's future plans are to attend the University of Pittsburgh for engineering. He is a member of Christ Our Savior Parish. Tim is the son of Benjamin and Pamela Butler and is from Westview, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tim Butler. Our next senior is Aiden Durkic. He has been a part of the football program for two years. Other Olsh activities include baseball his freshman year. His most memorable moment at Olsh is hanging out with his friends before practice. Aiden's future plans are to go to trade school and become a mechanic. Aiden is the son of Brian Durkach and Tana Timber and from Brayton Heights, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Aiden Durkic. Our next senior is Sophia Farrow. She has been a part of the cheer program for three years for both football and basketball and led her three times in both sports. Other Olsh activities include prom committee and charger challenge. Her most memorable moment at Olsh is being the first cheer team at Olsh to compete in a competition and singing on the bus rides home from away games. Sophia's future plans are to attend college and major in psychology. She is a member of Impact Christian Church. Sophia is the daughter of Christian and Robert Farrell and is from Ambridge, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sophia Farrell. Our next senior is Sophie Feldhus. She has been a part of the cheer program for four years and a three-year letter from both football and basketball cheer and this year's co-captain. Her academic honors include highest honors all three years in NHS. Other Olsh activities include WCHR, student ambassador, musical, chapel choir, and junior achievement. Her most memorable moment at Olsh is performing on the Benetton Stadium at the Gene Kelly Awards and winning Best Musical. Sophia's future plans are to attend college and plans on studying education. She is a member of Most Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish at St. Margaret Mary Church. Sophia is a daughter of Bill and Nicole Felhus and is from Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sophia Felhus. Our next senior is Darion Greer. Darion has been a part of the football program for four years and a four-year letterman. Team captain, first team all-conference as a defensive back and wide receiver, all-state wide receiver, and Beaver County Times 22 All-Star. Other Olsh athletics and honors include three-year letterman for basketball. His Academic honors include honor roll. Other Olsh activities include basketball. His most memorable moment at Olsh was the road to Heinz in his sophomore year and the bus rides with the team. Darion will be pursuing football in college and a degree in athletic training at an undecided university. Darion is the son of Kim and Charles Greer and is from McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Darion Greer. Our next senior is Joe Hatherly. He has been a part of the football program for two years. His academic and honors include honor roll and student of the month. His most memorable moment at Olsh was van rides with the team. Joe will be pursuing college for sports medicine. Joe is the son of Amanda Campbell and Joe Hatherly, and is from Keys Rocks, Pennsylvania. 
Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Joe Hatherly. Our next senior is Jaden Mara. He has been a part of the football program for two years. His most memorable moment at Olsh was the Akron 7-on-7 seven -seven trip. Jaden's plans are to study finance at an undecided college. He is a member of Archangel Gabriel Parish at St. Malachi Church. Jaden is the son of Michelle Mara and is from McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jaden Mara. Our next senior is Dylan Matlock. He has been a part of the football program for two years. His academic honors include honor roll. Other Olsh activities include being a huge fan of Olsh basketball and volleyball. His most memorable moment at Olsh was when his intended high school, Quigley Catholic Close, not knowing what to expect at Olsh. Dylan says he's a proud Charger and so happy to be a part of Olsh football. Dylan is enrolled in the United States ABA program and plans on becoming a commercial air pilot. He is a member of St. Augustine Parish. Dylan is the son of James and Cindy Matlock and is from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dylan Matlock. Our next senior is Julia Mosier. She has been a part of the cheer program for one year on the football team and four years for basketball as a four-year letter winner. Other Olsh athletics and honors include four years of volleyball and a two-year letter winner. Her academic honors include being an honor student. Other Olsh activities include Interact Club, Prom Committee, Student Ambassador, and Cairo. Her most memorable moment at Olsh was attending Cairo in the fall of 2022. Julia will be attending college to pursue a degree in dental hygiene. She is a member, member of Archangel Gabriel Parish at St. Malachi Church. Julia is the daughter of Keith and Christy Mosier and is from Kennedy Township, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Julia Mosier. Our next senior is Hogan Schoenhofer. She has been a part of the cheer program for four years, lettering for three years, and cheer captain. Other Olsh athletics and honors include the competition cheer team, three-year letter of basketball cheer, one year on the cross country team, and one year letter in track and field. Her academic honors include National Honor Society, highest honors all three years, and student of the month. Other Olsh activities include student ambassador, prom court, junior achievement, Cairo, interact club, and character alliance. Her most memorable moment at Olsh was when Liv lost her shoe mid-competition at Bell Vernon and she chucked it into the stands and some guy caught it. Hogan will be attending college to pursue a degree in early education with a focus in special education. She is a member of Archangel Gabriel Parish. Hogan is the daughter of Chad and Dana Schoenhofer and is from Kennedy Township, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Hogan Schoenhofer. Our next senior is Dorian Tate Jr. He's been a part of the football program for four years as a four-year letter winner. Team captain, 2022 All Black Hills Conference Whippeal First Team, and honorable mention. Other Olsh athletics and honors include 
four years of basketball with three letters and Whippeal and state championship for basketball in 2021 and 2022. His academic honors include 9th through 12th grade honor roll. His most memorable moment at Olsh was going to Hershey in the Whippeal championship. Dorian plans on attending a four-year college studying graphic design at an undecided school. He is the son of Michelle Tate and Dorian Tate's sister, senior, and his sisters are Delaney and Deline Tate, and is from Roslyn Farms of Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dorian Tate, Jr. And our last senior is Luke Vitorino. He has been a part of the football program for four years and a letter recipient. Other Olsh athletics and honors include three-year member and letter winner on the Olsh volleyball team. His academic honors include being an honor student. Other Olsh activities include student ambassador, junior achievement, and campus ministry. His most memorable moment at Olsh was the trip to Heinz his sophomore year. Luke will be attending a, a local college to pursue a, deg a degree in business. He is a member of Archangel Gabriel Parish. Luke is the son of Michelle and Shenine Vitorito and is from Robinson Township, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Luke Vitorino. Put your hands together one last time for all of our seniors. Thank you and go Chargers. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We're going to have a football game shortly here on the Old Sports Network. Uh, you just met all the senior football players and cheerleaders for the Old Chargers for 23-24 season. Stadium. It's William Ripshear Field in Moon Township as Charger Football presents the Ulsh Chargers and the Carlington Cougars next on the Ulsh Sports Network. Pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Al Esch alongside Christian Harbaugh, and you just watched the senior recognition for 23-24 season, and the Chargers and the Cougars will do battle here this evening. First section game of the year, Christian, and uh, both teams come in limping a little bit. The Chargers struck by that injury bug this year. Yeah, definitely are. Um, right now, you know, just trying to battle and chip away here. Um, had a really good start to the season. And then, like you said, a couple injuries, a couple key injuries, and trying to get back and be healthy. But you know what? They're staying positive. They keep practicing every day. They keep making adjustments. New guys are stepping up, young guys are stepping up, and that's what you want. And, you know, you're looking forward to a good game tonight against Carlington, and obviously they're coming in here, you know, trying to take one on the road. But, you know, hopefully the Chargers with senior night, it pumps those guys up, and 
some of those guys that are injured are getting back and that they'll be on the sidelines cheering them on tonight. There you see uh, the Chargers and the Cougars, both with one and two records coming into the season. As I said, this is a season opener for section play. And uh, yeah, uh, it, it, what, a, what a week, what a year it's been so far for the Chargers. Um, first week, they, they lose uh, Greer uh, in the first game and he's out for the season. He's gonna have his, his operation on the 4th of October. And then the following week, uh, Brandon Brazell goes down and uh, he's out for four to six weeks. Um, not as serious as Greer, but he, he has a chance of coming back this year, but uh, not for a while. And then last week, the, the big blow, another big blow, I should say, is their, their star quarterback who they lost last year due to an injury uh, on the first game. He goes out in the third game this year and he gets the other knee injured and he's out for the year. Um, due to another knee injury and and boy we felt for him last week yeah no we definitely did all those guys i mean they put their heart and soul in the you know playing this game and they love it and they want to be out there with their brothers and, and competing at a high level but you know right now unfortunately they just can't but they can lead off the field and i'm sure they will and they have the guys that have been out the last couple games so tonight i'm super excited you know see tate back there take some snaps uh, you know, hopefully the line is ready to go and geared up and, you know, it's going to be a battle. You're just going to have to fight your way, but it's going to be a different way of getting it done now, you know, than they're used to. Well, you talk about uh, guys stepping up and uh, playing uh, man down and that kind of stuff and had a chance to catch up with Coach Militzer again this week and uh, out at Youth Town and, and we talked a little bit and here's a little bit of, of what he had to say this week about this game and the rest of the season, actually. Welcome to Charger pregame. And again, we have Coach Don Militzer and Coach, uh, tough, tough week last week, both on the field and uh, on the bench, so to speak, with the, with the injuries. Again, injury prone. Yeah, and I think if you watch that game, we were in total control of the football game. And then uh, Van goes down, and I think it was just kind of the tip of the iceberg for us. I mean, it just really wiped us out. I mean. Everybody on the bench knows how hard he worked to get back and in the playing shape. And, you know, when he went down at that point, we had six starters from the Shenango game that uh, were out. And, it, you know, it's it just breaks your heart for these kids. I mean, you know, we came, Shenango's a good football team. They beat their last two opponents handily. And, you know, we handled them week one, and then uh, these injuries started. And I've never seen anything like it in 20 years of doing this. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking for the kids, but um, it's – you know, I think in high school football and especially what we teach here at Olsh, um, it's about more than the wins and losses. It's about the lessons we're learning. And the fact that these kids are showing up here today and practicing hard and uh, we still have a team full of kids. I mean, it's it's it, it's what it's what it's all about. I'm excited that we're going to be able to play this Friday. Yeah, it's uh, they, they played the hearts out against Clareton and uh, hey, playing at the Neil C. Brown Stadium. That's not an easy place to play. They played hard. And we had, as you said, we had control of that game until Van went down and then it seemed to kind of implode on yourself. Right. But obviously, you weren't practicing for, for Tate to be the quarterback all week. Right. So, uh, this week. Well, and actually in camp, we, you know, we worked with Dorian and Darion and Darion took a ton of snaps in the off season. Uh, but of course, he was, he's unavailable. So it's, you know, the thing with Dorian is Dorian's a great athlete. He's a great kid. He's a great player. All you have to do is get that kid, kid reps. And, you know, the reps that he's been getting, I think this week have been invaluable. And we're getting healthy in a couple areas, hopefully. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, we're repping some other kids there. Isaiah Scholes has been a huge kid that stepped up. I mean, that's what you have to be proud of. As bummed as we are for these kids that are fighting, I mean, kids that are stepping up, I mean, uh, have been fantastic and you look at what Cam Branch has done as a leader I mean he's been the best lineman on the field every game we've played uh, never comes off the field I mean uh, Zay's played every position on the field I think in his time at Old show just proud of these kids right now that we're able to put something together and hope to uh, put on a good show for senior night yeah tonight's senior night uh, and tonight starts the regular uh, the real season for the Chargers it's section time starting with the Cougars tonight and uh, Cougars come in with the same record as you guys I kind of think the Chargers might even, even with the injuries might be the, the favorite tonight I don't know I wouldn't say that I don't want to consider us a favorite <laughs> anymore uh, and I don't think the teams we're playing are going to think we're favorites That's I think true. Yeah. Uh, the teams that we've been able to beat traditionally are seeing how banged up we are and think that they have a shot at us but I don't think they realize how hard the group we have is working uh, 
So, you know, in, it's conference play. It's a, These are all rivalry games at this point. So it's kind of anything can happen. Uh, they're vastly improved. Uh, you know, they have some guys that can beat you. Uh, Ryan Lewis, number nine for them, is one of the best players I've seen this year in the Whitfield. I think he has seven or eight touchdowns. Um, he's the fastest guy on the field. I mean, he's, he's an impressive athlete. He's a Whitfield soccer yeah. player. I mean, he's a guy that can keep them in games. And they have a few other guys, Mc, the McKnight kid and Devontae Dean. Uh, you know, they, they, they're good players. Uh, we're fortunate. Our defense coordinator, Coach Piccinini, and uh, Pat Falsetti, one of our assistants, they were at Carlington last year. Coach Pick was the head coach. So they know them pretty well. So I think having their insight this week has been huge, uh, kind of knowing where to kind of go after them and where to attack them a little bit. So I think that will help us for sure. But I think every team's going to look at Olsh now as a team that they can possibly beat. And Just because of the injuries. Our kids are looking to make a statement this week, the ones that are playing. So I'm excited to see them. And, you know, it's a chance, you know, like this whole week, uh, young sophomores like Ronnie Smith and Gino Lasego are getting time on the line. And, you know, we're excited to see them. And Jacob Beam, the freshman who we've seen a little bit already, Hunter Chimeni, these kids are going to have to step up and play bigger roles. Um, so we're here, and they're, you guys are doing special teams practice right now. And, and I noticed last week we picked up uh, a kicker. So, oh, we picked up a good one, too. Yeah, we so, were watching him last week. He outkicked his coverage, <laughs> he to say the least. Um, you know, his first extra point, I think, went out of the stadium. Yeah, uh, he's a big, strong kid. He's a great kid. He's really taken to coaching. And, um, man, he, the sky's the limit. I mean, again, I've done this for a long time. And I, I, I've had Division One kickers that don't have his leg strength. And he's only a sophomore and really didn't know what he was doing last week. Just kind of came in and swung his leg. And you saw how far the ball went. So... Uh, I think it's going to be exciting for Charger fans to see him develop over the next few years. I mean, I don't know what the record is, field goal for Olsh, maybe you know, but I, we'll think, look it up. I think that will be challenged in the next few years for sure. I, I mean, he's definitely capable of a, you know, 40, maybe even 50 plus yard field goal. So, Well, it's the Carlington Cooters and the Chargers here tonight at senior night. Coach uh, set you up for it and hopefully it's a good one. So don't go away. We got opening kick right after this. Tiger Stadium, Al Lish, Christian Harbaugh alongside here on the Old Sports Network, ready to bring you senior night. Chargers and the Cougars from Carlington set to go at it. We do want to thank our football program sponsors, Doughboys Oven Fresh Pizza. Order online at Doughboys Pittsburgh. That's D-O-U-G-H-B-O-Y-S-P-G-H dot com. Or you can call them at 412-771-1030. We want to thank IBEW, that's International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 712, Lasego Automotive Sales and Service. Call them at 412-276-6244. excuse me, 412 Want to thank Trim Pittsburgh, a shop for men, located at Lawrenceville and coming to Ross Park Mall this fall. And we want to thank Brewer Airport Toyota, Pennsylvania's number one volume Toyota dealer. Keep Brewer Airport Toyota in mind and like them on Facebook. Learn more at BrewerAirportToyota.com. Christian, I, I anticipate a, a hard-fought game on both sides of the ball here by both these teams tonight. Uh, like I said, season opener, they both come in with a record of one and two. And... Uh, I mean, it's all on the line now. Before, you know, okay, you wanted to win the games. It would have been nice to win the games, but these are the games you have to win. Right. This is the one. This is absolutely the one. You're here. You're home, right? You're you're coming off of two weeks that you would like to get back, but now they're in the past, and you're going forward. Now you start the section play tonight against a Carlington team that's hungry and wants to get a win on the road. 
and they're coming in with some playmakers on that side. They got some athletes, but now they, these games matter, like you said. You got to find a way to chip away and get a win here tonight. They're going to have to play four quarters, and it's really going to come down to taking care of the football. You can't turn the football over, and you got to be down in on defense, right? No easy ones. Yeah, Carlington comes in with uh, they've already beat last year's win total. They were winless last year, 0-10. They've already got one win this year, so they're 1-2 as they come in here and uh, looking to improve that. So you know they're, they're flying high right now. Yeah. And uh, or you saw the Chargers coming onto the field led by senior Brady Brazell carrying the Olsh flag. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm super pumped for this one. Like I said, you're going to see a little bit of a, a different Olsh team I think out so. tonight. You know, obviously last week we seen it when Van went down, but they didn't have time to prepare. Right. Now you have a week under your belt. You had time to prepare. Now you get your, your X's and O's, you know, kind of adjust, make your adjustments for Tate and those guys, and now you're ready to roll. Yeah, and the Chargers send out their seniors to uh, for the coin toss including the injured seniors. And uh, yeah, last, last week uh, we, we brought it up and they only had one attempt from the field to kick, but they picked up a kicker last, last week by the name of uh, Patty Altmar. And uh, he's a sophomore and he's got a leg, folks. If you haven't, didn't watch any of the game last week, his opening kickoff for the Chargers touch back into the end zone and then he kicked a, an extra point. The Chargers only score an extra point, and he almost kicked it out of uh, Neil C. Brown Stadium. We were watching him in warm-ups last week, and he was hitting 40, 40 plus. So, I mean, he's got a leg, and he's got a future with this stuff if he stays with it. But hopefully tonight we get in that kind of territory so we can take some shots and see what he got. Yeah, he's, he's not a little kid either. He's 6'5", just under 200 pounds, so. And, uh, that's a big boy. Yeah, yeah. And he's just a sophomore, so. And that's why he's the soccer goalie, huh, too? Because he yeah, can cover yes. that net. Yes, he's, he's the goaltender for the soccer team. Coach Rodriguez is going to be trying to get him to be the center <laughs> of the basketball team. <laughs> yeah, he lost cables. <laughs> and Greer. And, and Greer and played Greer. as the center last year at, at six, six foot. Yeah, six, six, one, six, two, whatever mm -hmm. he is. Yeah, Greer, he's six, two. Yeah. And and by the way, Rocco and Bryson are doing great. They're looking great. They're in, they're in tip top shape right now. Oh, that's they're, right. They're your they're boys. They're playing well. They're, they are playing they're well. They're your boys, aren't yes, they? Sir, yes, sir, they are. <laughs> yes, sir, they are. Okay. Glad to have them. Okay, you two coaches, coaches watching you. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chargers will receive. They'll send. Uh, Ethan Speedy Gardner back deep for, for the Chargers. Isaiah Schultz and uh, Taylor Ellis will also go be back. Oh, they're going to switch up Gardner and send Tate back there deep. Chargers will. Kicking for the, the Cougars. Yeah, why not? Let Tate go out there and re receive this one. Get the juices flowing a little bit. I can't see who the kicker is. Is that? Looks like 17. 17. I don't have a 17. Anyway, the kick's in the air, and it goes over toward the corner, and this one will be picked up. At, no, it's, he's in the end zone. Tate picked it up. He was in the end zone. And in high school football, as soon as the ball crosses that plane, it's an automatic touchback. You can't run it out. So the Chargers will get the ball at the 20-yard line, first and 10, to start this one. My man had a boot, though. Yeah. 17. That's, that's a kick. Sorry we don't know. Who you are on the roster, though. All right, let's see. See if we can get Speedy involved early, too. I think last week, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it was a lot going on with some of the injuries and stuff, but I didn't get him as involved as the first two weeks where he can he can do a lot running the football or being on the outside, being an athlete. It'll be Tate running the offense. He's got Schultz and Bra uh, Brazell in the backfield with him. He's back to pass quickly. He gets it out to Speedy Gardner in the flat. Up to the 25, he gets hit there. They might mark him at the 24. That's where they will get him. It's a pickup of four. For me, that's all you got to do, right? Those quick, you know, quick outs and just hit your guys in open space. We got guys with, you know, legs and athletes that, you know, you get a couple blocks, they can get out and run. Well, that's, a, that's the thing with, with the Chargers receivers right now with uh, 
Garner and and uh, and um, Bitterino, you get them in open space and they can make things happen. So second and six for the Chargers. Hand it off to Schultz. He cuts it upfield across the 25. Uh, hand across the helmet. I was looking for the face mask. I they was just about to say the same thing. No face mask. Didn't get a call. He gets brought down at the 29. Pick up a five. It'll be third down and one for the Chargers. I think this is one thing that we're going to have to do tonight, too, is, is be manageable on third down, right? If you can put yourself in that position where you're manageable on third down. No doubt. You're getting third and shorts. You can com convert and keep the drive alive. Twins to the far side. And Chargers get them a free first down as the Cougars jump off sides. And that's what you want, too. The flag's going, you know, not for or for you tonight, not against you. So hopefully for the Chargers, you can get a couple breaks like that. That moves the ball up to the 34-yard line. First and 10 for the Chargers. Tate calling out the signals here. Low snap, and we got a pre-snap whistle. False start on the Chargers. And that'll give that five yards back, but it's still first down. And that was one thing that we struggled with last week, too, and, and even the week before, you know, these low snaps or high snaps. You know, they got to get on the same page here. You got to get some good snaps. First and 15 back at the 29. Vitorino <laughs> out wide to the near side. Garner out wide to the other side. Another pre-snap penalty. Let's see what this one is. And I think it's another procedure against the Chargers, if I'm not mistaken. And you got to be patient here. You're just going too fast right now. Oh, offsides charger. Somebody was set up in the end zone, or in, in the uh, neutral zone. So it's first and 20 from back at the 24-yard line. And that's just the stuff that can't happen no. now, right? No, especially no, we the just talked about especially it. Especially the pre-snap stuff. Right. That's just execution stuff. Tate's going to keep it this time. He's going to run, cut it up. He gets it up across the 30 to the 31. It'll be second down and 14 for, for the Chargers. And that's a good call there. Call your own number. Wait for it to develop. Good job with the guards. Opening up some space for Tate to run there. And now, now it's just following your blocks. Picks up uh, seven to the 31. That's, that's, yeah, you're right. That's the idea. You don't have to get it all at once. No, you're Tate not going to get it back Hands it once. off to Brazil. Brazil up across the 30 to the 33. Picks up two more. So now you're in this situation now because of the two penalties. You're playing behind the sticks now. And now you got third and not manageable where you got to, you know, go out of your comfort zone a little bit and throw a deep one here if you want to keep the drive alive or at least make some plays with your feet. But if you don't take those penalties, right. this doesn't happen. Yep. If you don't take those penalties, it's it's third and one. But as it is, it's third and 11. Trips to the far side for, for Tate. He's going to roll that way. He's got some room, and he's going to cut it upfield. He's across the, f the 35, up to the 40. It's going to be short of a first down up at the 40-yard line. I personally love the family environment of Ocean. That's what I saw from my first day coming in as a freshman. Everybody was kind and helpful. All the teachers and all the students, we all treat each other like family. So it's it's more like a homey type feel. You get to know everyone who goes here. It's like a community. Everyone's together and we're all just like a family. I think I've grown 
more religious through the teachings and understanding the religion better. With the amazing theology teachers and getting the chance to go to church every week, it's definitely expanded my faith. Different things like Cairo retreat or uh, being able to come to confession or go to adoration here in the chapel every day gives you really a good opportunity to connect with God and express their faith and not feel shy about it. The teachers are incredible. They make you feel like one of their own kids. I feel comfortable going to them at any time for whatever the need be, and I know they always have my back to help me. They get to know you personally and get to help you in different ways. They're not just worried about your grades, they're worried about how your feelings are. They care about you more. Orsa is a place where you can get involved in a bunch of different things. It sets you up for college. It's a school full of many opportunities that'll help you grow, not just spiritually, but also just as a person in general. Olsh is one big family. Everybody knows everybody. Olsh is challenging adventure and it really just is an amazing experience.
to OSN, Old Sports Network, and uh, apologize about the uh, issues we've been having. Hopefully we did a couple things and hopefully we fixed it. Uh, apologize for that, but uh, good news is Chargers are on top of Carlington here at senior night, 14 to six at halftime. I'm Al Lesh, I want to thank Christian Harbaugh for coming by and as always, Ryan Parker on the camera tonight. Uh, before we do that, we got some bills to pay. I want to remind everybody to uh, join us here at Moon Stadium on September 30th. That's a home game as the Chargers take on the Chartiers Houston Buccaneers in the homecoming football game. Stay tuned for more information on special alumni perks and be here to watch us crown the homecoming king and queen. You can also gear up for fall sports this season with new Charger fashion from www.olshgear.com. Hey, there's no better way to see yourself as an old student than to become an Olsh Charger for a day. All eighth grade students and transfer, transfers to grades 10 and 11 are invited to join us as a shadow for the day and experience firsthand what it's like to be a student here at Olsh. You'll be assigned uh, Charger Ally, which is your host for the day, and you'll attend classes, meet teachers and students, and eat lunch on us. The Chargers for a Day program begins on October 3rd, so pre-register now for your experience at www.olsh.org slash visit. Also, you want to save another date, save this date and join us on Monday, October 9th at 7 p.m as Olsh welcomes motivational speaker Dustin Dale to kick off our new speaker series. This event is free and open to the public. Visit www.olsh.org slash speaker series to register. Hey, you want to remember the early auction application Early action ap application period for Olsh class of 2028 opens on September 18th. The early action applicants will have their application fee waived. Submitters between September 18th and September 29th, 2023 to take advantage of this opportunity and receive an early acceptance decision. Apply online starting on Monday at www.olsh.org slash apply. Last but not least, you want more information on the Olsh Chargers? For rosters, stories, and much more, visit www.olsh. Excuse me, let me start over. www.olshathletics.org. Special thanks go out to our website sponsor, Covenant Financial Advisors. Thank you. And we do want to remind you of all our football sponsors this year. It's uh, Doughboy's Oven Fresh Pizza, IBEW Local 712, Lasego Automotive Sales and Service, Trim Pittsburgh, uh, Shop for Men, and Brewer Airport Toyota, Western Pennsylvania's number one volume Toyota dealer. Christian, what a action-packed first half uh, we had the Chargers um, dominating the play on both sides of the ball. If it weren't for a couple of fumbles, uh, Carlington still be looking for their first points, but uh, Chargers uh, remain on top 14 to six as we uh, get ready to start quarter number three. Yeah, if the Chargers execute the way they did in the first half on offense and defense, they will win this game. The way they won't win this game is if, one, if they don't execute like that, but I don't see that being the problem. The problem would be if you turn the football over can't turn the football over and give Carlington extra opportunities and field position to be able to score. Right now, Carlington can't move the ball on Olsh's defense, or at least they haven't in the first half. So if you can keep it to where you're playing field position and you're doing what you your part, then you'll be in good position there. Obviously, with the offense, it's been great. Tate's been able to get what he wanted. He's got to his spots, right? He's got good blocking. The offensive line has been terrific. You got guys running in the backfield. Gardner's been in the backfield. Uh, Brazell's been in the backfield. Schultz's been in the backfield. They've all did great job. Tate's called his own number. He's did great. And then on the outside, right, rolling out, finding Gardner a couple times. Brazell running behind his blocks, finding Schultz on the outside, you know. 
and I, I would like to see the Chargers take a couple more shots when they have opportunities, when you think you, you lull Carlington to sleep a little bit. But for the most part, like we talked about in the first half, don't, don't change it up. It's been working. Run the football like you've been and just run behind your line. And then on the defensive end, you just got to keep the intensity up, keep being aggressive. They were finding ways to blitz and get in the backfield and put some pressure on Dean. If you can keep doing that, you'll be fine. But just know he's a good player. They're going to make adjustments as well. And so they're going to come out and they're going to have some different game plan. Yeah, I, the, the thing that impressed me about the Chargers, uh, both offensively and defensively, first offensively was, you know, they showed in the first couple drives, run, 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 throw in a pass and uh, moving moving the ball, eating up the clock and, and getting, you know, like I said, eat, eating up yardage as well. I mean, they were getting six, seven yards each play for the most part uh, on, a, on a run. And then there was the one drive at the end of the at the end of the half. What impressed me was is, is clock management. The way Tate would, would pick his passes on the outside to Garner and Garner give him credit for getting his feet in bounds and getting out of bounds quick to stop the clock. It was that was great ball movement and the way they moved up the field was was like like surgical. Yeah, no, it was terrific. And the one thing I will say. 14 points doesn't seem like enough for the way the Chargers <laughs> played on offense no. and defense. I mean, really, in reality, Carlington had that one drive that was kept alive by a couple great plays by Dean and Buckhart. But other than that, Chargers were terrific on defense. And if you don't turn the football over twice, you probably have opportunity to put more points on the board. But, you know, the times that they did have opportunities, it was good. Yeah, and, yeah I was going to say, defensively, I like the way the Chargers – and you, you touched on it as well, the way they kept uh, Dean in, in check. Um, they were able to get into the backfield, and how many times guys were hitting the backfield for huge losses, and that was all because of the pressure coming right up the middle from the Chargers. And uh, I'm looking down on the field, and, and, and look for you talked about uh, the Cougars coming out with some maybe some changes and changing things up. Uh, I look for a little offensive change too. I wouldn't be surprised we see Isaiah Schultz taking a few snaps here in the second half and he's got a gun for an arm too and maybe you know the Cougars are, are zoned in on that run and you get Schultz uh, firing it downfield and he's accurate I yeah. mean I watched him in practice this week and he was dead on so I would not be surprised if you see Isaiah back there throwing the ball a little bit well we know how he is in baseball on the mound <laughs> so I know he's got an arm you, you'll see a lefty we see him tossing it around right now but listen I wouldn't be surprised either. Have him come out, take a shot when they least expect it. Maybe you put Tate out on the outside, see if he can get out there and make a catch as well. You know, I'm sure he hasn't lost his footing out there, <laughs> even though he's been taking the snaps. But obviously, Carlington, they're coming out when the buzzer's sounding here. So, you know, they're in there making their adjustments, and, and those guys are coaching coaching them up. And, you know, Dean, he, he can make some plays. Yeah. And, and we haven't called Lewis's number yet very much tonight. So... Uh, look no. for them to try to get Lewis involved. He, he was their big time offensive player the last couple of weeks. So I'm actually going to see. I don't know if I saw him on the field unless he changed and that, numbers. And that could be the reason why we're not calling his number. I'm looking. I'm looking right now when he come out. We didn't get any word that he wasn't playing no, tonight. Uh, um, no, I don't. I actually don't say. I still don't know who fifth, uh, 17 is. I do not see Lewis's number on the field right now, so that's probably why we so haven't called his. So that's probably why we haven't called his number. Yeah. He's probably unfortunately not playing tonight, but big time talent. But again, you know, Chargers can't let up here. You know, it's still a one, one score game. Yeah, I see a couple players over there, not in uniform, sitting on the end of the bench. So. He could be one of those guys, so I um, don't, don't know. But anyway, the Chargers will be kicking off. The Cougars will start quarter number three with the ball, so the Chargers took the ball to uh, start this game. Cougars get it second half. And but I'm telling you, I'm, Schultz is, the whole time they come out here, he's been throwing, so I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to my prognostication here and say he's going to get some. I uh, hope he gets a chance. I want to I want to see it. Yeah, cuz I would like to see him and him and uh in uh Tate hook up. Hit, yeah. Tate on the outside and Absolutely. have Schultz hit him down the sideline or something or All crossing right. pattern. 
But so. the one thing, and in that way, hey, you just touched on something. That's one thing that we haven't got to all night. We haven't had no crossing patterns. We haven't had no slants. It's been all day to outside. But right now, it's working, right? Yeah. The run up the middle is working, and then the bubble screens are working. The swing plays out, out in the flat are working. And then we found out that Tate using his legs and getting out to the outside, if he rolls out right or he rolls out left, and it gives him an opportunity to make a read, right? right? So he gets out to the outside. He got great blocking. If he doesn't think he has the throw, then he runs. He tucks he just it in. tucks it and runs, right? But if not, if he got Gardner and those guys on the outside and Schultz and Brazell, man, you just give it right to him. And the way Carlington has played defense, they've played prevent, they've played zone. They haven't been too much press man. So you, you can have those opportunities. Well, we're about ready to go here in the second half. Both teams are out here on the field. Chargers have been out for a little while. Next week, don't forget, next week, Chargers travel down to Fort Cherry. We go down to McDonald, Pennsylvania, take on the Rangers. And that should be a battle with their we know how sophomore, good. With their sophomore quarterback. We know how good he is, man. Matt, is Matt he good? Sig. He is unbelievable. I remember calling that game last year, and I was like, wow, this man is it. very impressive, and he's only a freshman. Yeah, last year, he's a sophomore this year. He's already getting D1 looks, uh, Matt Sig, and he's um, he's uh, not only a football player, he's a basketball player and a baseball player. Right. So um, this kid's an athlete. He's a baller. If you want to see an exciting player, yeah. and, and, he, he is and, unfor and unfortunately for the Chargers, not on the Charger team, you Make the trip down to McDonald or watch the broadcast next week because this Matt Sig is for real. Got to got to win this game. Yeah. Got to finish this out in two quarters. But you know when you're preparing next week, you, his name is circled on every board oh. that you have in sight, and you're all you're talking about is we got to find a way to contain that man because you're not gonna you can't use the word stop because he's he's you, that good. You you're control. not gonna stop him, control him, contain him, and you got to limit him. Limit. That's the word. Yeah. Yep. yep. But. Until then, let's win a football game here. Yeah, we got one to to, to, to beat to win here. Dean, Dean and McKnight back deep for the Cougars. Omar, he'll squib it to the up man at the 25. Up the middle it goes, up close to the 45-yard line. I think that was Stifler, number 12 it was. Jacob Stifler. Brings it up to the 43-yard line, and that's where the Cougars will start with the ball here in the third quarter. Cougars from their own 43. Good field position for them. Dean in the backfield. Send Stifler in motion. Dean will keep it. He's going to go off the right side. He's past the line. He breaks a tackle. He's got the outside. Gardner to beat. Gardner will push him out of bounds. A good run there by Dean. And we said they contained him the first half, first play of the second half. And Dean scampers up the field for a first down deep inside Charger territory at the 25. And that's one thing you worry about. Schultz. Coming in off the edge, right? And he's applying pressure to Dean, and it, it forces Dean to step up. But nobody pinching the middle for the Chargers. Um, Havily and Branch and all those guys not able to wrap up and tackle. And, and Dean just goes right up the middle, cuts to the outside, and he picks up some big yardage. And now we got a Charger down. Oh. And that was late, too, because they were about to line up, and he kind of fell late. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Oh, I'm trying to see, and they got an official right in front of me. I can't see who it is. Cam Branch over there looking in. Aaron Natopsky working on the leg of a player. And move, Mr. Official. Oh, that's uh, Dylan Matlock. Matlock. 
Looks like he can't put any weight on his right well, leg. It's turned his ankle or yeah, something. Yeah, it might be. Hope, let's hope it's nothing major, just a little tape job, and he'll get back out there. As Dylan's a major cog in this line, both offensively and defensively. Dean in the backfield from the 25. He's going to flip it out quickly to Holloway. Holloway goes down. He's going to lose a yard back to the 26. And that's all you got to do there. Just keep him in front, wrap up. Schultz did a good job there and not getting beat up the sideline on the little swing pattern. Could be second and 11. And for the Chargers right now, you know, go with what was working, stay with your blitzes, but you gotta know that you gotta contain Dean. The thing is, is they, they're, they're getting there. They're getting to the point where they need to be. They're just not wrapping up. Right. Dean's gonna roll. Here comes the pressure from Brazil. Brazil trying to trace him down. He flips it out and it's incomplete. Trying to hit uh, Buckhart. Falls incomplete. That linebacker blitz there, Brazell just gets right into the backfield, does a great job applying pressure. And it's like you said, now it's just like you can't catch them. They're doing a good job applying pressure, but when Dean uses his feet and yeah. keeps the play alive and then he steps up in the pocket, it makes it a little tougher on the Chargers. That's, that's where you could use that, that uh, cables with his, his long legs and speed. Right, exactly. On, on the end there. Looks like Ellis is a little banged up here too. He's limping. Hopefully the Cougars don't pick that out. Dean, here comes the pressure up the middle. Dean eludes it, knocked down and almost intercepted by Schultz. Isaiah popped it up in the air, dove for it, couldn't come up with it. Another incomplete pass and it's gonna be third down. And just as I said, Isaiah, I hope they don't look Ellis's way and what did they do, they look right at Ellis, but good thing it was underthrown and Schultz you know, made a play on it, almost oh, picked oh, it off. That's right, it's fourth down. I was, I yeah, that, that was a big stop right there. Fourth and 11 from this, the 26. This is a big play right oh, here. Oh, sure. Early Thinking. in this third quarter. You got, you got 10, 11, 10 yards to play with. You can just, you can bend here a little bit, but you can't break, you gotta hold them here. High snap, Dean brings it down. Being chased by Branch, flips it out, and this one is gonna be caught. And it's going to be a first and goal for the Cougars. I think it was Burkhardt again, was it not? That was. That was. That was Burkhardt. That was McKnight. Oh, that was it? No, three. Yeah. I think it was three, McKnight. McKnight with and the catch. And again, it was the same thing. Branch oh, gets into the backfield. Wait, there's a flag on the play. I think it's against the Cougars. They're marching it off against the Cougars. Five yard penalty. I didn't see what it was. Must oh, have been false a false start. start. Okay. I didn't even see a flag. I did not either. They come in late from the Must have. from the backside. I didn't I didn't see it. Back to the thirty one yard line. Well that's huge. That's a big break for the Chargers. And Carlington again, when Dean can get out of the pocket and keep the plays alive, he's he's finding guys. Chargers gotta get there and wrap him up. Now it's fourth and 16. Dean has trips to the far side. Gets a high snap. Here comes Schultz all over him. And he's gonna be wrapped up and sacked. They're gonna see where they mark him. That's the question. They're gonna mark him at the 41 yard line. At the 40 yard line. First and 10 for the Chargers. Turnover on downs. That's big time, Al. That's smart by the Chargers coaching staff to keep applying the pressure. And again, Schultz gets into the backfield. He was untouched. High snap for Dean to handle, and Schultz in the backfield, wrap him up, and now you got turnover and downs. And the Chargers are looking to make a, a drive here early in this third quarter, put some more points on the board. They'll start at their own 40-yard line. See what they start with out of the gate here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Tate call his own number here. Schultz and Tate in the backfield. Trips to the far side, the wide side of the field for the Chargers. 
He'll hand it off to Schultz. He'll bring it to the near side. He's at the 45, the 50. First down for the Chargers and more into Carlington territory. They'll mark him out at the 46 yard line of the Cougars. Guys are running tonight. Just that delayed handoff to Schultz. Again, Schultz following his blockers, getting out to the outside and Chargers doing a good job at blocking upfield. Picks up a first down and we talked about it. Don't fix. Don't fix it, don't change it if it's not broke. All right. 14 yard scamper by Isaiah Schultz. Tate now, same setup. Again, he'll hand to Schultz, it'll work the first time, it'll work again. He's got the 40, 35, 30, down the sideline he goes. Inside the 20, knocked out of bounds. Around the 15, let's see where they mark him. Right at the 15 yard line for Schultz, another great run. In credit to Speedy Gardner out there. He's applying the pressure, he's do, being physical, he's doing his job, he's blocking upfield, and Schultz just doing a great job running behind his blockers. 31-yard run by Schultz down the sideline. And that's that's Cam Branch and Matlock. Matlock coming back coming into back the in. game, and yeah. he's just doing a great job on the edge there. I mean, this is terrific. What do you do, Al? You go right back to the same play again? Why uh, the, not? It's the same setup. I, I, you watched it, fake it to Schultz this time, and Tate takes it. Yep. Here comes Tate the same way. He's not going to get the line of scrimmage. He's going to be wrapped up in the backfield. The loss of two. Now they're going to give him a loss of one. You know what that, that, that play would have been? Fake the handoff play action, right? Oh, it's yeah. It's slant across the middle. I usually have been looking for for Speedy coming across the middle or Brazil, but I but I like it. Good call. He'll give him a loss of two back to the 17. <laughs> Trips to the far side. Gardner by himself to the near side. High snap. Schultz is going to pick it up and get tackled all the way back at the 37 yard line. They're going to no, they're pointing up ahead. I think they're going to say he got hit at the 35. Again, we talked about it again. Can't turn the football over. That's the one thing. Now you just shot yourself in the foot a little bit. You're having a great drive. You're setting up shop, getting ready to score, and now you're second and a million miles away. 18-yard loss. Chargers need to get to the five yard line I'm for sorry, first third, down. Yeah, third and a million miles away. They need, it's third and 30 for the Chargers. Tate's gonna roll to the far side. He's gonna turn and look, heave it down the field. This one's gonna get intercepted. No, incomplete. It falls incomplete. And there's a Charger down, down by the goal line. This is Ellis. Taylor Ellis. Is that who it is? Is down. Yep. Right he at the slipped. one yard line. He yeah. slipped down there. I'm not sure. I think he, I think he just lost his footing down there. Yeah, I mean the play was up up around the ten yard line. He was reaching. 15. He was reaching for his calf. Not sure. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Let's see what's going on here. Against the Chargers, an eligible receiver downfield. That's declined. It'll be fourth down. But let's let's uh, see what's going on with uh, Talon down there. Here in the top ski. Checking him out. Anyway, you know what? Uh, little, if you, I don't know how closely you follow the football team and their uniforms and stuff. A little uh, tweaking of their helmets. Yeah. They got the, the yeah. gold numbers last year. They were they were. 
purple numbers with gold trim. There's gold numbers on there now. And then the Olsh is it's the same way. They got the gold Olsh on the side, the other side of the helmet. So uh, instead of the purple with the gold trim. So it's easier to see. I, I like them. It's, it's yeah, their helmets are sweet. Yeah. Yeah, for years they've been the purple or the, the gold helmets with the purple Olsh. And uh, this year they went to the purple helmets. I like it. Me too. This is not good. He's been down there a long time. Yeah, he has. And that's a tough break for the Chargers too. Injury here. You're, you got a great drive going. Yeah, what's already high, high snap. And what's already been a mash unit for the Chargers. Right, with people injured. Coach Militzer coming back off the field now. Uh, again, next week we're in Fort Cherry, bringing you that action. And he's going straight to the other sideline. I don't know if he's going to go to our locker room or over to the paramedics over at the ambulance. So. It looks like he's struggling to put any weight or walk on his own over there. When I saw him laying there, he was reaching down for his lower like his calf or his ankle or something. We'll see what the Chargers do here. Probably. Here take we a go. shot downfield. Well, it's fourth down from the 35. Tate, back to pass. They're going to go for it. Flip it down the field. Garner trying to run under it, and that's going to be... Smart play by Carlington. He just knocks away. He had a chance to intercept, but it's an incomplete pass. It'll be turnover on downs. Carlington will take over on their own 35-yard line. It was the right idea there. Yep. Speedy going for the end zone. Why not take a chance? You're not going to punt the football. On your side of the 50, Tate, good arm there. Just in coverage. Great coverage by Dean breaking that, breaking that ball up. So Carlington now trailing 14 to six to the Chargers with 8.21 left in the third quarter clock. Takes over on their own 35 yard line. Dean hands it off to Schooley. Gets the corner, trying to break tackles. He's up to the 40. Maybe if they'll mark him at the 41, gain a six, it'll be second and four after the six yard scamper. Again, the Chargers, it's, a, you know, just a couple mental mistakes, three three mistakes that's going to mm -hmm. keep this game close. We had some opportunities to get in the end zone. Second and four from the 41. Under eight minutes to go here in the third. Burkhardt in motion. Dean will keep it. And he's going to get hit in the backfield. He's not going to get to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose two back to the 39. There's the defense again. Getting in the backfield, wrapping up and tackling. That's all you can ask for. Now you set up with a big time third down play here. Third and six from the 39. You have to bet that the Chargers are going to blitz again here. Watch Dean with his feet. He's made some plays on third down, yep. keeping the drives alive. His end rushers need to uh, be able to uh, contain him, not let him get to the outside. And we got whistles, timeout. Carlington takes their first timeout of the half. They did this in the first half too where they called their timeouts early. They know how crucial these drives are and these opportunities. And for the Chargers, you gotta make sure you don't get beat deep here. Keep yeah. everything in front of you. You don't want one big play to change the game right here because it could be a really a momentum shifter if that's the case. I'd like to see the Chargers stay with the blitz here play and I also would like to see them play a little bit of man-to-man -man coverage here 
instead of sitting back in a zone. Send your, send your rushers on the edge, send Brazil, send Schultz. Press up a little bit. Jake, Jake uh, Bame out there on the defense, along with Tonery on the far side. Yeah, you got Bame out there, he's a freshman. Got Gardner over here. And Schultz is Schultz. being forced to pick up in the slot here. Dean and Schooley in the backfield. High snap, Dean draws it down. There's a hold inside. There's the flag, there comes down, the flip out, it's caught. But he was out of bounds. They're gonna say, did he catch it? I don't know if he caught it out of bounds or not, but this one's coming back. Cam Branch was being wrapped up, he's a big he, bear hug. He's a beast back there. <laughs> I mean, that's all you can do to stop him and slow him down. Oh, he was, he was gonna be all over Dean and uh, one of the linemen reached up and. He's got that great swim move, he gets right through. Yeah. He couldn't see his number because it was stretched out to the to the turf. <laughs> and we called it. We're all in the booth yelling. <laughs> better, th better throw that flag. That'll move him back. Third down and all the way back to the 29-yard line. Can't fall asleep here, though. Again, same thing. Got to be doubting on defense. Put the pressure on him. Tate, let's see if Tate can come up with a big play here. They need to get to the 45, they're on the 29. Dean now, high snap, he's got some time, he rolls to the far side. Looking, he's gonna run. He's hit and brought down, out of bounds at the 34 yard line. Picks up five, it'll be fourth down and 11. And that's what you need right there. Force Dean outside the pocket and then force him great defense down field by the Chargers cornerbacks and he has to tuck and run there. You wrap up in open space, keep him in front of the sticks and now you're getting the ball back. I'll give him credit for six on that. In punt formation back deep for the Chargers. They got Speedy back there. That one's almost blocked and that one's gonna bounce and picked up by the up man. This is Tate. Tate across the 50 to the Cougar 45 yard line. I see no flags. Chargers will have it first and 10 at the 45 of the Cougars. Wonder if they talked about that in the locker room there. <laughs> Tate had that mistake earlier by going to get the ball and he fumbled. Carlington recovered this time. He was able to scoop it up and hold on. And we got another Charger down. And that was behind the play. Way behind the I mean, play. Down in the same area Is where- Is that Schultz down there? When he went to block the block the punt, he come up hobbled and fall out, fall out behind the play. I can't see, there's a bunch of people around him. Man, now this is- That's wow. This is every play. This is, yeah. I mean, you know? ev every week, every play, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know, it's. I do not see Isaiah on, around, so that could be him. That's what I'm thinking it is. Yep, he's not on the field. And he almost blocked the punt. He was close. Hopefully it's just a, a cramp or something, or maybe he felt like he, tweak something yeah that is Isaiah yeah, he's walking like it's a cramp but they weren't stretching him out like it was a cramp so but we'll see and he's now we he, know he, he had that injury you know at the end of last year yeah. during baseball season so maybe he tweaked something well he's walking better now so maybe they just need something worked out so. I mean a lot of guys on this sideline are limping maybe he just Tweak something. Yeah. See if he sits a couple plays and comes back in. Yeah, because he just had a great drive, that last drive. Well, that'll bring Tonery in, take his place. It'll be Tonery and Brazil in the backfield with Tate. Vitorino and Garner spread out, one on either side. From the 45, Chargers, first and 10. 
Handoff. And it is Brazell. He's hit in the backfield by a host of Cougars. And at one point, you're, you're starting to wonder if Carlington's going to, you know, make some adjustments like they did there and be able to stop the run because they haven't stopped the run all night and especially up the middle. And that time they do a great job at holding Brazell up at the line. Got to find Speedy. He lost two. If Speedy's in a, in a slot like this, you just got to give him the ball. And then nobody's covering him 10 yards. Tate back to pass. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. He runs right into him, breaks another tackle. And finally brought down all the way back at the Charger 39-yard line. Cougars just kept coming one after the other. Nothing that they could do. And it's going to be third down and forever for the Chargers on the sack. Finally bringing him down was junior uh, Camilo Tamonti and a timeout on the Chargers. And a couple mishaps again for the Chargers. Not having enough guys on the field. And then you don't recognize that Speedy Gardner, your best playmakers on the outside, wide open. I mean, there was nobody. He lines up in the slot. There's nobody in, in a mile of him. All you have to do is just quick swing pass right to him. Hey, he's going to get out and go. Good luck trying to tackle him in open space. Loss of 13 on that sack. And I know Tate's not up at the line making audibles and, and changing plays, but... That's one thing you got to recognize. I'll mark him at the 40. And the Cougars, they come out of that that delayed blitz. That was like a delayed blitz up the middle. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, and it uh, worked perfectly. Coming up like, like it was shot out of a cannon. Well, here's Schultz back in the game. Now he's going in that slot. But the Cougars all night haven't, haven't guarded. I mean, look, Schultz is just standing in the slot. Yeah, the safety's going to pick him up, if anything. He's all by himself. Yeah, look, Tate. He's wide open. Tate gets back to the line of scrimmage no further, and the Cougar fans are happy. It's fourth down. Chargers going to have to punt here. Right now, the Chargers need to see that that slot position is wide open. And, and another, another tough break for the Chargers where they – Stall a drive because they can't. Yeah, they had the ball. Just execute. They had the ball in Cougar territory. They ended up punting it away from their own 40. Right. Now the Cougars are just giving themselves opportunities and chances. Tate gets this one away. Good punt. Keeps it away from Dean. Good job there. Chargers will watch it bounce. Great Charger bounce inside the 15 to the 10 yard line, and it rolls dead there at the 10. And another Charger. Looking limp. Oh, that was that was Schultz that again. That was Schultz. Yeah, he's he's, he's baby in that, that, yeah. that leg. And then great punt by Tate. Oh, that was. And you get the roll. Balls on the ten yard line. First and 10 for the Cougars. Senior night here at Moon Stadium. Oh, honoring all their senior football players and cheerleaders. Congratulations to all of them. Dean calls for the ball. They'll hand it off to Burkhart. Cuts it up the field to the 15, up close to the 20. Mark him down at the 17, 18 yard line. Nice run by Burkhart. The one thing about this game, Al, and the feeling that I'm getting is just that Carlington's just hanging around and hanging around, right. and the Chargers are just giving them plenty of opportunities. Eventually, Dean and those guys are going to make plays, so you you got to find a way here. Defense has been great getting stops, but you can't give them that many opportunities. Timeout called here. Seven-yard run by Burkhart. 
Let's time out. Carlington, they take their second time out. And that's going to be crucial down the stretch here. And again, Carlington not being able to do well with the play clock. You know, they're, they're struggling a little bit. They almost have to take a delay game, so they just call a timeout. Yeah. And now they're down to one. That's going to play a big factor in the fourth oh, quarter. No doubt about that. And Especially this as tight as this game is. Exactly. One score game. Really, it's going to come down to who's going to make least amount of stakes, mistakes in the last three minutes of this quarter and in the, the next quarter. That's what it's looking like. Because that's what the ball game's turned into. It's became, you know, just just mental errors. Taking bad penalties, you know, high snaps. Turn the football over a couple times. Yep. Both teams showing in this second quarter or second half that they're able to move the ball and then mistakes. Second and three from the 17. Dean's going to pass it. He thought he was. He's going to be brought down in the backfield. Who was that wrapping up? Bra we Brady Brazil. Brazil. And Takes Joey Hatherley down. was in there too. Brazil. Brings him down at the nine yard line. Um, but that's been the bread and butter for the Chargers defense all night. Brazil getting in there. Schultz is getting in on the edge. They're doing a terrific job right now. He'll mark it at the 10. Loss of seven. But guards for Carlington just haven't been able to pick up that edge rush all night. Third and 10 from the 10. Schultz dropping back. High snap. It's into the end zone. Dean is going to fall on it, and it's going to be a safety for the Chargers. Two points, and they'll get the ball back. The high snap. And there's, an, there's a mistake there. Hatherley. And Hatherley's going to pick credit. that up as he gets the, as he gets the sack. And a high snap. Dean couldn't handle it. When I was reading before that play, I thought Schultz was going to get in the backfield again because nobody was able to pick him up. But he dropped back, and Joey Haverly gets in there on the high snap, and he's able to sack Dean in the end zone. Yeah, Dean had no choice. He had to just fall on the ball. Yeah, right. I mean, you want to don't want to give up a touchdown there, so you just fall on the ball and. And the cool thing take is, the, two. the Chargers will get a get it back off the free kick from the twenty yard line from the Cougars. Right. Uh, that's big time. And we just talked about mistakes, right? Yep. And so now Carlinton makes that mistake, and now Chargers going to get the football back. But, again, still a, still a, a lot of time left in this game, only a 10-point game. Aiden Durkacz steps onto the field for the Chargers. Good kick there. Back to speed. He picks it up on his 25. Got some open space. Cuts it back up the middle, across the 40, 45, 50, 45 of the Cougars. The 40 down the sideline. He cuts it back inside, spins out of another tackle, and inside the 30-yard line goes Speedy Gardner. Ethan, Speedy Gardner, what a return from the 25 all the way down to the Cougar 29-yard line. That's big time by Speedy. Just getting out, using his feet, athleticism. Man, he's cutting up field. Using his blocks, he's quick, man. Great job by Speedy, putting the Chargers in great position. Now he's going to come off, take a breather. Oh, yeah, after that? Well, that's a big-time return. Two in the backfield. Schultz and Brady. Brady Brazell will get the, get the call. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And gets stopped. Well, he won't get the line of scrimmage. He'll get brought down at the 30 yard line. It's a loss of one on the Brazil run. I'd like to see them go back to Gardner here. I know he's a little winded. He got your one play break. Go right back to him. I, I would like to see Schultz a quarterback right here and give Tate the little shovel pass. Schultz in the backfield, but he's in a running running back position. Schultz on one side, Brazil on the other of Tate. Twins to the near side. Passes it out, and he's got Garner. Garner tiptoeing down the sidelines. 
He's gonna be into the end zone for a touchdown. Gardner was that close to going out of bounds, but he tiptoes in the pass from take to Garner. Ooh, baby. That's what we were looking for all night, right? Yeah. This time he goes with an out route, a little slant towards the sideline. Tate just great two drop, two two step dropping and just releases the football. Good job by Gardner to tiptoe that sideline and gets in the end zone. And that's what we're looking for. Big time second half right now by Gardner. Altmaier with the point after attempt. This one. Not as good, he misses that one off the side of the foot. But the Chargers tack on, and with 106 left, it's the Chargers, 22, and the Cougars, six. And that's what the Chargers needed right there. Big time dr drive, making plays. Speedy with a good re return, and he reward him. He gets in the end zone. So you, actually, if you look at it with the with the safety, it's like the Chargers scored a touchdown with a two-point conversion. Absolutely, absolutely. And there you go. You know, now it just broke this game open with a minute left in this third quarter. And at this time, now you're just looking to not turn the football over and, and play defense. You manage to do that, you'll walk out of here with a W, but still got a quarter left. Got to be smart. 52 seconds, two plays, 29 yards. Chargers score on a 30-yard touchdown pass to Garner. Deep kick by Altmaier, picked up at the nine. This is Dean up the middle, cuts it to the outside, breaks one tackle, goes toward the sideline, and he's tossed out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. And that's where the Cougars will take over. That was a great kick by Patty. 56 seconds left here in the quarter. Speedy Garner is going to have could, could have a career in the circus as a tightrope uh, high wire act <laughs> performer, right? After that, uh, <laughs> catch and that was unbelievable. Dean with the handoff on inside. I think is that Schooley? Oh, Couldn't see the number. It was. It'll be second down. Picks up five uh, to the 36. Keep everything in front of you if you're the Chargers right now. Don't want to get beat deep. No doubt. Approaching 20 seconds here in the third quarter. Here comes the blitz by the Chargers. Hands up, up off the middle. Breaks through the line. He's up close to the first down, but he's going to be short at the 40-yard line. Another run by Schooley. Picks up four. It'll be third and one from the 40. And that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Chargers 22. And the Cougars of Carlington six here on the Old Sports Network. Got to be smart for 12 minutes here. Stay locked in. Keep executing on defense. Yep. Keep the pressure on Dean. I want to thank uh, Heather Parker for uh, helping me out. I had some issues, not issues, but had some things I needed to get done right before game time. I had an appointment uh, selling my mom, my parents' house and uh, had the closing at six o'clock. So I came and set the equipment up and. Heather came and turned everything on so you guys could watch the senior recognition. And, and I want to thank her for that. She's been a great help. Every week she is. Uh, thanks, Heather, for everything you do. I thank Mac for coming and opening up the press box so I could set things up a little bit early. 
guys have been great. So, and then I, then we had an issue with the, with the. I hope, I hope, people could see a little bit of it. You know, yeah, that's what I'm hoping so too. We're calling a great game. I know that. Third and one. Dean gets hit in the backfield. Never had a chance. Schultz and Tate back in there to sack him all the way back at the 40, the 35 yard line. They're actually even call it the 34. Man, that's been all night. Pressure, heavy dose of the Chargers defense. Lost. Tate coming in. A little safety blitz there. Schultz getting in on the action. Loss of four all the way back to the 34. It's fourth and seven. And if you're in Cougars, you're in a position now where you got to go for it. I think they are. The offense is staying out there. And we got a timeout. Is this Cougars taking their last one? They are. Cougars taking their last time out with 11-11 left here in the fourth quarter. This could be crucial that's, for them. That's big time right there. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, they had to take a couple early in the third, and now you just burn this last one. Not even a minute off the clock in the fourth quarter. You mentioned it earlier, Christian. Now, I mean, it, the, the, the Cougars just slow getting to the line. Yeah, getting very the play slow. In They're it's it's taking some time, yeah. and that play clock is is getting catching down. up on right, him. right. And Dean's not getting a sideline, getting a call quick enough, and he's not getting back in the huddle. And they're not getting in the line, and it's been a, it's been a struggle. It's, it's, the it's, Chargers have really controlled this game. It's been one of their downfalls, right? Today, so. because I think that they have playmakers, they got guys that can do some stuff. Dean's been playing well, but he just hasn't had enough time, and the Chargers are doing what they want. Oh, good news. I see Ellis down on the sideline, so. And we've seen him go out earlier, too. Yeah, yeah, he was the one down on the, oh, that's on the good. goal line there. So he hasn't been in the game, but he's 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 on the sidelines, and he's not on crutches, so and he's walking around. So back to punt is Dean. I think it's Dean. It's a line drive kick. Nobody back for the Chargers. They're just going to let it roll, get a good roll. The Chargers weren't ready for that. I, I think they... They had all intentions on Running thinking they play. were going for it because of the score right now, I believe, and right. the way that the Carlington hasn't moved the ball. Well, they punt it away. It goes all the way to the Charger 13-yard line. And so now you're just talking about turning the clock a little bit and making sure you take care of the football. You play field position game, now you win this game. That's it's turning the field too. That was a 53-yard. Yeah, that punt. was huge for yeah. for yeah. Carlington, and uh, that was a mistake by the Chargers because they weren't back to return right. the, the kick. I mean, Gardner was back there, and then all of a sudden he came he, running, he, up. He come yeah. running up, and I'm not sure why. I think they were thinking what was fake. going on. I mean, it's, it's okay. The Chargers have the ball. Yeah, right. If they, if they can move the ball here, get one or two first downs. Timeout, Chargers. I think that's the first for the Chargers, is it not? Yes, it is. Comes with 10.58 here in the fourth. No, that's his second timeout. The Chargers? Yes. It is. Looking back on my notes. Second timeout, so the Chargers have one timeout remaining. Well, here we go. Schultz and Tate in the backfield. Going to flip it out to Speedy. Speedy's got it in the slot. Tries to cut it to the outside. He breaks one tackle up across the 20. They're going to mark him down at the 21. A nice little play there. Finally, we find... Speedy on the outside. I mean, he's been setting up in the slot, and they've been not guarding him for the last handful of plays. Pick up of eight. He's second and two for the Chargers. Mm -hmm. 
Trips to the near side. Brazil in motion. Little flip to Schultz. Schultz got the corner. Cuts it upfield. He up close to the 30. He's across the 30. First down for the Chargers at the 32-yard line. Nice run by Schultz. And that's been a great play all day too, right? Just a little pitch to Schultz. Yep. He got your blockers on the outside. He got trips to the near side here. And they're able to hold their block. And Schultz is just running behind them. 12-yard run. Schultz has been picking them up in big chunks when he runs the ball. Right. And like I said, clock's going to move quick here. So if, as long as the Chargers can just keep the ball on the ground, don't turn it over, stay in bounds. You pick up a couple first downs, like you said here. Game will be pretty much in hand. Under 10 to go. Trips to the far side. Schultz and Tate in the backfield. Tate flips it to Schultz to the other side. He cuts it up inside. Across the 35 to about the 30. Eight yard line. Schultz just Pick out there making moves there. Good juke move. Pick up of six. Broke off a couple players. <laughs> and this is fun though. This is. Hey, this is what you want to see. This is Charger football. This is a little different, different look than we've seen the first couple, couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but man, is this fun to be like this? We're just playmakers. Yeah. Ellis back in the lineup. He's out there split wide to the far side. Another pitch. This time it's to Garner. Garner to the near side. Across the 40. Breaks a tackle. He's got the first down across the 45. Oh, that was close to a late hit. And marking him down at the 46-yard line. It's a pickup of eight. And DeMar out here doing work downfield, blocking, getting into a little scruffle there at the end. Man, he's given everything he has. Yeah, he, he got a little feisty at the end of the last game. Right. <laughs> and getting out there, he's <laughs> leaving it all out there. These guys on the line have been terrific all night. Uh, he was, didn't practice all week. He had a sprained hand, but he I was I saw him on Wednesday, and he said, he said I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Yeah, he's playing no matter what. Can't keep him off the field. First and 10 from the 46 for the Chargers. Tate back to pass. He's got some time. He flings it down the field, and it's caught up by at the 40-yard line Tonery. by Tonery. Owen Tonery. Wow, what a big-time play. Tate standing in the pocket. We haven't seen much of that all night. He throws a dart to Tonery, and what a great run, route run by Tonery across the middle. Takes a little bit of a hit. Man, that, that feels good. You pick up yardage like that, you get a first down, you get a, your bell rung a little bit, but you get up, you're all fired up. That's a big time play right there. 14 yards on the pass and catch. We said take and do that. Oh yeah, he's you got know, an he, arm. He's got an arm, he can throw the ball. Tate and Schultz in the backfield. This, or no, it's Brady, Brady Brazell, right up the middle. Up close to a first down, up around the 31-yard line. And that delayed handoff again has been working all night with Brazil. Because you get those different dose, right? You got Schultz running the outside. He's more of a power back, but he gets out the outside. He got some quickness. And you bring Gardner in there, and he's super quick on the outside. And then you come back with Brazil. You know, you have Tate as well, calling his own number a couple times. And then you come in with Brazil and lull you to sleep a little bit, but man, he's tough and physical. He runs tough. Second and two from the 32 on the eight yard run by Brazil. This time it'll be Brazil again. He's gonna get up across the 30 for the first down and more. Inside the 30, almost to the 30, the 25 to the 26 yard line. Brazil picks up the first down. Just keeps those legs moving. Picks up six. Again, running the same play, a little delayed handoff. Brazil chugging along, picking up great yardage. First and 10 for the Chargers at the Cougar 26 yard line. 6.57 and a rolling clock here in the fourth quarter. Tonery, Ellis. And uh, Durkacz out wide to the right. Tate back to pass. Not enough time. And in to sack him in the backfield was uh, Jake Stifler. And Tate's slow to get up. 
Now, this is what can happen. There's no need for it right now. And now take gets hurt. I mean, I don't even know why we're throwing the football no. right now. It's 22 to 6. There's six and a half minutes left. I know you have a feel, feel good drive here, but now you possibly got your, your quarterback injured. And, and at this point, you can't have it. No. You just can't have it. It's no. It's you, just inexcusable you, right now. You're, you're moving the ball on the ground. That, that one passed the tonery, but uh, – No, I mean, I, I get it. Or, or you're quick, still playing football, or, or but – quick, quick little flip passes out to yeah. the flats. And yeah. at this point, you're calling you're calling a play there, and I know you got young guys on the edge. You want to get them experience, and you want Tate to throw the ball a little bit with a comfortable lead. But you have Schultz and Gardner standing on the sideline with their helmets off. They're not even in the game. Those are your guys you're looking for most of the night. No reason to do this. Brazil's run the ball good. Just keep keep giving the ball. I agree. I agree. Uh, I'm trying to see here what they're running. They got the f team in front of them. I can't see what they're looking at. I think he just got he got tackled from both sides. He got a little bit of a sandwich in the middle. Hopefully it's just like a stinger or a tweak or something. Hopefully, hopefully it's not nothing serious. I mean, he just took a sack, so you hope you hope that it's just a little bit of a it looked like the way that play developed, and I mean, the guys were coming right in his face. It's like he was so focused on his receiver who he wanted to hit. Yeah, maybe it just knocked the wind out of him or something. They're looking at his right ankle. Yeah, maybe it was one of those high-low, you know, hits. Because it came from both sides, so he got a little bridged. Maybe it tweaked his tweaked his ankle or knee a little bit. But but again, it just this can't happen. Yeah, it's like I'm a proponent of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you're right, they were moving the ball running. Right, and I know you Run again. Schultz you want to take lunch. opportunities, yeah. but but you you don't have any room and margin for error right now in this football season. Your quarterback's already down for the season. You got your backup in who's playing terrific tonight, and he's he's playing great. Yeah, at this point with six and a half left, even if he is going to be okay, I would. Yeah, I, I would, wouldn't I even. Would, I would. I would put Schultz in there the rest of the game and yep. just say, Zay, just hand the sucker off. Hand the ball <laughs> off, or keep the ball, or keep the ball, one or the other. And this looks pretty serious. Well, I mean, he's, he's not—he's he's he's not getting up. up right now. He's sitting up, but they're still looking at that, that right ankle. Hey, we want to thank our uh, football sponsors, uh, Doughboys Oven Fresh Pizza. You can order online at Doughboys Pittsburgh. That's D-O-U-G-H-B-O-Y-S-P-G-H dot com, or call them at four one two seven seven one ten thirty. I want to thank uh, International Brotherhood of uh, Electrical Workers. Local Union 712. And how about uh, Lasego Automotive Sales and Service? Call them at 412-276-6244. Trim Pittsburgh, a shop for men located at Lawrenceville and coming soon to the Ross Park Mall this fall. And last but not least, Brewer Airport Toyota, Western Pennsylvania's number one volume Toyota dealer. Well, at least that's good to see him walk off on his own power. He's limping a little bit. They're yeah. going to go do some work on him in the sideline. You won't see him the rest of the night. But Schultz is in there, quarterback, and we got to delay a game. Was it a delay? What's the, what's the flag went? Timeout. Time out. Chargers take their final timeout. Well, now you're having a time out there because you're all discombobulated with the injury to Tate. Now Schultz coming out to take snaps. So neither team, no more timeouts left in this game unless it's an incomplete pass or out of bounds. <laughs> or unless we have somebody <laughs> run somebody on the field. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so both teams have expired all their timeouts. It'll be Schultz. At the court quarterback position, Tonery and Brazel will flank him right now the way they're setting up. I look, 
it looks like we're watching soccer with all these injuries. <laughs> Guys are just going <laughs> just down, go down, man. They're, they're just, just going down, down to, to get time. Second and 19 for the Chargers. Schultz gets the ball. He's going to run it right up the middle. He's across the 30 to the 26, maybe the 25-yard line. I'll mark him at the 26. He'll pick up nine, get those nine back. That's all you got to do. Keep the ball on the ground. Keep the ball on the ground. Keep the ball on the ground. Hold on. Ball security. Ball security. End this game. No sense of doing anything crazy here. So it'll be third and 10 for the Chargers at the 26. Schultz gets the snap. He's going to throw it. The lefty looking, looking, looking. Jo he avoids one. Now he's going to run across the 25, brought down at the 22-yard line. And let's see if Patty gets the call here for a field goal attempt. Yeah, why not? Let the young man come out here and try to field goal. Four yard run for Schultz up to the 22 yard line. They're giving Schultz an opportunity. And he is, Patty's good, out here. Good coverage downfield. Let's see what Patty got. It'll be a 30, 38 yarder. They got to get a good hold here. If they get a good hold, he can make it. Ball's up and it's blocked. And Carlington, he tried to get the distance. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen, low. he, he would have had all of that one. Oh, yeah, he hit it. Well, he just, just did a good job of getting in the backfield there. Just didn't get up high enough. Carlington will take over at their own 36-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're going to get one here sooner or later. Oh, yeah. Four forty eight left in this one. And off up the middle, hit at the line. Got one, maybe two to the 43 yard line, or excuse me, the 38 yard line. Schooly run. Dean reverses field. He's got some open field. He's got the first down and more into Charger territory. He makes a move. He's get pulled down at the 42-yard line. First and 10 for the Cougars. Can't give up that much yardage if you're the Chargers. Keep him in front, got to wrap up in open space and make a tackle. Dean takes a snap, hands off to Schooley. Schooley breaks one tackle, breaks a second in the third. He's got the first down. No, he's shorter the first down out to the 33 yard line. Picks up nine, it'll be second and one. And you can tell right now the Chargers are a little bit gassed on defense. They can't let them get in the end zone because if they get in the end zone, you're going to see some heroics. Dean's going to pass. Looking, he's got an open man, and it's incomplete. Schultz on the coverage. It'll be third down and one from the 33. Dean and Schooley in the backfield. Twins deep both sides. Dean looking to pass. Here comes the blitz. He avoids one. Here comes in that more pressure. Dean avoids it again. He's going to flip it up in the air. And this one's going to be incomplete. It's going to be fourth and one from the Charger 33. Good coverage down there by Ellis. Great pressure by Schultz. Yeah, had Cam Branch in there. Yeah. 
You have Voteki in there. Good job by those guys to get in there and apply some pressure. And who was that that just came off the field? Was that Damara? I think that was Cam. Or is that? Is that 58 or 68? We don't have a 68. That was Cam. That's Cam coming off. He's looking injured too. Gino Sego in there. Fourth and one, and the Cougars jump. That'll push him back five yards. Yeah, that's not Legal good. Procedure. They're looking at Cam's shoulder. Yeah, he was coming off holding his arm mm. funky. Yeah, his left arm. Maybe his shoulder's out of place or something. He looked like it was like hanging there. Backs him up to the 38 yard line. It'll be fourth and six. Well, that penalty hurts the Cougars oh, there. Oh, whoa. Oh. They, got, they got the ball at the wrong place. It, should, it was fourth and one. It was fourth and one and they just went back 10 yards. <laughs> yeah, they marked the ball there. Now it's in the right place. All right. Yeah, fourth and six. Okay, there now we're right. <laughs> at the thirty-eight. That's where it should be. Dean looks for the snap. He's got it. And he's a straight run to the right side. He's tops and he pops and he's got the first down. Good pass out there to McKnight. Might McKnight will pick up the first down at the thirty yard line. It was a crossing pattern. Chargers were in man to man defense. They applied the pressure, brought the house. But somehow, Dean pulls another rabbit out of his hat and finds McKnight for a first down, keep the drive alive. Needed, needed six, got eight. Run there. Schooley stopped in the backfield. And I think for the Cougars right now is just the, the time and no timeouts is not on their side. They're sustaining a good drive here, but they're running out of time. Dean's going to pull it down and run. Breaks one tackle, avoids another, cuts it back toward the middle, and he's spun down after a pickup of about seven inside the 25. And that's what you want to do, too, Al. Keep him in bounds. Don't let him get to the right. edge and run out of bounds. Good job by the Chargers to contain Dean and make force him back up the middle. From the 23, Dean looking to pass. He avoids one. He throws it up in the air, and it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Votecki in there applying the pressure, almost had Dean. And Dean again almost pulls, picks up another first down. Throwing that one out to Burkhardt, but he couldn't draw it in. From the 23, this could be the ball game for the Cougars. Fourth and four from the Charger 23 yard line. See what the Cougars have in mind. Dean, they're do everything guy. He's got Schooley in his sidecar. Dean's gonna roll to the near side looking to pass. He's gonna tuck it down and run. He's got the first down inside the 15. And did the ball come loose? No. I thought it did, but I, but I think it was after he was down. No, yeah, that, the Chargers yeah, they're saying they got him, but the official is saying he was down. They're rolling him down. At the 14 yard line, it's first and 10. Pickup of nine. Two minutes exactly with a rolling clock left in this one. So unless the Cougars have a, a 20 yard uh, or 20, 20 point play here. Yeah, like I said, there's they're this sustaining a great drive just run out of time yeah dean this time look it's to the left here co comes the chargers and this one is had the man open in the corner couldn't couldn't hang on holloway was wide open yeah. there he, he got past gardner had it in his hands That'll stop the clock with 138 left. 
Second and 10 from the 14. Tate not in the lineup yet. There's Schooley with the run right up the middle. He gets inside the 10. Mark him at the nine yard line to host the Chargers, bring him down. It'll be third down from the nine, pick up a five. Yeah, Tate's still sitting down there with yeah. his leg up. I don't, I don't think he's coming back in. Well, no, he's definitely not. Yeah. And with the time running out too, but you just hope that he's okay yeah. and it's nothing serious. Right, just a tweak or something. Yeah, because, I mean, he had a heck of a game. Dean looking to pass. Got some time. He rolls to the near side. Flips it up, and that one's got a flag late here. I don't know. They didn't signal touchdown. No, they, he just threw the flag right away. Maybe he stepped out of bounds. He might have stepped out of I'm bounds. I'm thinking he stepped out of bounds, an eligible receiver. An eligible receiver, right. Yep. Yeah. And the, and the umpire was right on it right yeah, there. Yeah. The line judge was right on it. Yeah, Damara was pointing against toward the Cougars. It was on them. Let's see. Yep, ineligible receiver. He stepped out of bounds. You can't go out of bounds and come back in. and You can't be step out of bounds on your own. On your own. You can be forced out. You can be forced out. out. So that will move him back to the. 14 yard line. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, it's incomplete. It's, I guess it goes as incomplete. Yeah. Oh, no, it was on the nine. Yeah, it's five yards back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to the 14. Yeah. And he'll hand, uh, hand it off with the double reverse. And it's McKnight all the way back at the 25. And a lot of trickery there. That'll do it. The Chargers will turn it over on downs. What a great job by the Chargers to make sure that the Cougars didn't get in the end zone. Got a little bit of help on that play of him going out of bounds, an eligible receiver, but nonetheless, Chargers keep chipping away and find a way to keep him out of the end zone. Schultz is going to go up under center. I imagine he's going to take a knee with 43 seconds left. He's got it. Stands there. Now he takes the knee. First time under center all year for anybody. Under center. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think Van did, did. Van. Yeah. And that'll do it. Both the teams walk to their sidelines. They don't have to snap another one. This one's over. The Chargers are going to win this one. 22 to 6 over to Carlington Cougars. And record overall goes to two and two. They are one and zero in section, and the Chargers are tied for first place. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's <laughs> listen. It's a big time win tonight. Great job protecting home field here, and a great job by the Chargers on both sides of the ball tonight. Defense was terrific all night. Offense was terrific. Got a heavy dose of a lot of different guys doing some great things. Offensive line was terrific. The defense was awesome. The blitz was on point. But, again, we're going to talk about it, the injury bug. Yeah. And that's just an unfortunate thing. You got some guys over there banged up. Madlock looks banged up. Obviously, Cam Branch came off late, banged up. And we know Tate. So, hopefully yeah, those guys are better. You, you know, you expect some dings and nicks and things like that, but uh, let's hope the Chargers, yeah, like you said, Christian, hope the Chargers don't have a bunch of guys that are, like, um, out for a couple weeks and that kind of stuff. I want to thank Ryan Parker for running the camera for us tonight. He's making his uh, farewell bid as he heads on out. Uh, thanks, uh, Ryan. Ryan, appreciate that. A bunch of Parkers. I want to thank Heather Parker as well. Uh, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the Chargers get it done. Uh, opening night of uh, the regular season, as we like to call it, the section play, and uh, the Cougars go to 2-2 two and 
one and three on the season. They are 0 and one in section. And the Chargers, as I said, two and two overall, one and 0 in section. And they have the, the pesky Fort Cherry Rangers uh, up next. Uh, and that'll be down in, at, uh, in McDonald. Yeah, that's gonna be no that's, easy task going on the road. Yeah, that's not going to be an easy game at one at all. That's not an easy place to play, number one. And number two, they got a couple great players down there that the uh, Chargers are going to have to contain. But they did got it done tonight. Uh, they, uh, Tate doing a great job stepping in, quarterback, running the team, a uh, couple of nice passes. Uh, and uh, Schultz with, with a great running game. Brady Brazel uh, running the ball well. Garner with a couple good runs. And... Uh, Couple good uh, catches and pa you know on passes. Uh, they, they just they, they were a complete team tonight. Yeah, they really were. And again, I think the good thing for the Chargers now, and a positive thing you can look at is, unfortunately, with the injury bugs. But now they're playing different, right? right. So teams got to scout them different. They got to play, you know, have a different game plan against them. But now the unfortunate thing, and the thing we're going to talk about, you know, for the last couple minutes here, and then moving forward is is Tate and how, how he's going to be for next week because right now they're they're working a lot on that leg and it doesn't look too good. He didn't even get up and get to the huddle, so hopefully he's okay. Um, obviously, if he's not, then Schultz is going to be next man up. Next man up, and then yeah. you're you're talking about <laughs> him. But but the thing that's happening now, Al, is is that you're losing playmakers on the edge when you do that. You know? Right, exactly. Um, but Tate did a terrific job tonight, and they, and actually the, the offense looked terrific. You know. Like you said, there was a heavy dose of uh, different stuff. You yeah. got the running on the edge. You got Brazil up the middle. You got swing plays and bubble passes out to Gardner and those guys. And it was it was really good. So hopefully, you know, prepare for next week. And, and you know it's going to be a, a tough task going on the road. But if you play the way you played tonight, you'll have, a, you'll have an opportunity and chance. But Tate looks worse than he did wa walking off before yeah, by himself. Yeah. Uh, he looks looks yeah. hobbled now and, and getting a lot of help to get into the locker room. Yeah, from his dad, yeah. So, all right. I see uh, Ellis limping off the field as well. So <laughs> he was he went down today. That's what I mean. Ellis was limping cams over there, you know, same thing. So Okay, well, it's it's it is what it is. Uh, the charter right. will come back, he just gotta retool and, and coach Dawn and and the staff will do what they have to do. They're down there talking right now, and I know they're talking injuries because uh, the medical staff is down there that's that's uh, talking to them. So they're probably giving them an update on on Tate and and all the guys. But uh, Chargers, like you see, like like what you see after the disappointing game last week, um, they look flat. Of course, that was because of Van going out so early, but. Uh, they turn it around. They look totally look like a different team tonight, Christian. Yeah, and they and did. I liked what they I really saw. Did. Me too. Me too. It was great. Just got to get healthy now. Get back preparing for next week. Twenty-two to six is the final score. I want to thank everybody involved, Christian. Thanks for doing what you do. I'm Al Lesh. I want to thank all the people here that helped us. As I said, Ryan Parker, Heather Parker helped us out a great, great deal. And and uh, Coach Mack, thanks for everything that you do. We'll see you next week from McDonald. The Fort Cherry Rangers will be the next uh, opponent, and the Chargers will travel down 22 and check that one out. Uh, you can drive down and, and join, uh, join us there and, and enjoy the game in person, or as, as always, right here on the Old Sports Network, we'll be bringing it to you. And we, again, want to apologize for the technical difficulties in the first half. Hopefully it, it, we fixed it in the second half and you at least got to see the second half of this game. On behalf of everybody here, I'm Al Esch saying thanks a lot, everybody. Chargers win 22-6 over the Carlington Cougars. Good night, everybody.